Here we go. I'm Dave Johnson, and welcome to Off the Court. This is for you, DC 12 Club members in the DC 12 Clubhouse, and this is the place where we take you inside the monumental basketball department. I mean, we're really going inside. In fact, inside the arena, we've got General Manager Tommy Shepard, the Vice President of College Scouting, Frank Ross, and by the way, we want to thank Brett Greenberg and Dean Oliver from the analytics side of the business for joining us last week. We appreciate you tuning in and submitting your questions. And, and Tommy and Frank, you'll be glad to know I grilled them. The ticket holders grilled them, but Brett and Dean didn't give any way secrets. They would not give away any secrets. They, they, were, they were just tremendous. It is so good to be with uh, both you, Frank Ross, the Vice President of College Scouting, and of course, a star, one of the, the greatest players in American University basketball history. I'm proud to say when I was calling basketball games at the Naval Academy, I called games that Frank Ross was involved in. Beat me every time. He still beats me and comes up and surprises me. And it's great to have him involved. In, and we'll get to what Frank is involved with. But, but Tommy, we'll, we'll start with you as, as general manager. Here we go. We've got a draft that you both have been preparing for probably for a year now. And it, apparently it's going to happen on Wednesday. Uh, just I'll start with you, Tommy. How are you feeling going into this draft? Oh, uh, we're, very, we're very calm. We're very excited. And certainly there's a great deal of anticipation uh, so many people put in just countless hours to get us prepared for this moment. And uh, Wednesday night with the thir- with the ninth pick, the 37th pick, we think we have opportunities for the Wizards to get better. And just can't say enough about the people that put all the work in to, to get us to this moment. Well, you mentioned that work. And, and Frank Ross, last I talked to you, you had mentioned that you were at the Southeast Conference Tournament. Did I get that right? Back in March. And of course, um, the world kind of shut down and went crazy. But First of all, I think just your title, Vice President of College Scouting. I know there's a lot of curiosity what that involves. And again, uh, you were a fifth round draft pick of the uh, Philadelphia 76ers. It should be noted, it should have been a much higher draft pick. Uh, the 76ers right. made a mistake. But just, just, just explain what that role is all about. Well, first of all, Dave, uh, it requires a lot of traveling, which um, we have been doing, uh, total scout, the uh, whole scouting staff have been doing up until March uh, 11th, where I was actually at the SEC tournament, like you said, and everything halted and I came back home. So, you know, up until then, it had required a lot of traveling, but we had to shift gears and we were doing a lot of Zoom calls and we went to watching a lot of films. But um, one of the fortunate things was, is is that we had done the bulk of the work, I'd say, and we were just fine tuning, we're going around, we're having a conference tournament, and then we would have the NCAA tournament would follow that. So we had done the bulk of the work because we had been out quite a bit and it was March. Well, indeed, the bulk of the work done, but it, it, it's a different environment. And, and I'll throw this out to both of you. And this was a question for one of our season ticket members, uh, Tommy and Frank, I'll start with you, Tommy. Just again, so much work was done prior to everything shutting down, but there was also, it has been a different process to prepare for this draft in terms of uh, interviews, you know, you're not the camps and, and you know, Portsmouth or or whatever, just address how different that has been and how you as a staff have adjusted. Well, I think one thing we've done a great job with here is just focus on what we do have available to us on those players, all the, all the film that they ever played games preceding college, all their college games that they played in, all the intel that we have, and we can go off of that. Don't worry about the things we don't have. You do miss the draft workouts. You do miss the combine greatly. But we were able to do over 85 Zoom calls. We were able to interview just about everybody that we wanted to interview. So we think we did enough prep work for sure. And, and the big focus really is not to over-scrutinize this thing. Don't overthink it. Uh, we've had plenty of time to really hash out what it is, what our needs are, how we put the board and, and players that can really be for the Wizards. There's players that will go high on the draft that maybe they weren't as high on our board. And there's players we have very high that other people may not have as high. At the end of the day, it comes up to – Results, production, uh, a couple of years, you can evaluate a draft. I think it's really hard to evaluate a draft on November 19th. I think where we are on the 18th, uh, the Wizards are still a very young team that are cornerstone franchise. Bradley Beal, uh, John Wall is on his way back from injury. We missed him for two years. So Scotty Brooks likes to call him the first pick of this year's draft. Uh, certainly we, our intention is to re-sign Davies Pertans and have that be a big piece of what we're doing moving forward. And last year at this time, well, last year, in last year's draft, we drafted Rui Achimura at nine. We think he's a, a building block piece for us as well. And then we spatter in all the guys that we've, that we've uh, added to our roster over the last year. 
uh, going back to when Thomas Bryant came a year and a half ago and then moving forward. Uh, we just think we have a good blend now of young players, quality vets. And with Ish Smith, you put Ish in that mix as well. And uh, I think we have some experience. We certainly want to get better. We just have to keep adding talent. And it's got to be the right talent. Sometimes it's the best fit is better than the best talent. And we're trying to go through all that right now. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. And, and you may bring up a good point, as you also, you and I have discussed many times, patience is also important. You, you, you feel like you've assembled a good team and, and want to continue to see them grow. Uh, Frank, you know, I'll get you just, just how has it, how this process, the lack of, of, of in-person that, that is typical in an off season, if you want to call it that, how has that impacted your job? Well, you know, normally we would, you know, for the workouts, as Tommy was saying, we, uh, we, were, we did Zoom for the interviews. Big part of uh, the draft process is when bringing guys in is not the workout itself, but it's the in-person interview because we have the guys on our on our turf and we can see how they you know how they what type of personalities they have how they conduct themselves and when they're not in their college environment so that was one of the things that not having being able to bring guys on our turf you know we had to we 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 went to the zoom interviews and doing the zoom interviews i mean they were good but it's it, nothing's like having someone you know come to your house and, and you can see how they behave so to speak on off the court in the DC 12 clubhouse. Again, we thank all our DC 12 club members for uh, their terrific support. We are counting down to the 2020 uh, NBA draft with general manager Tommy Shepard, the vice president of college scouting, Frank Ross. We have a, a virtual pregame show with Britt and Dennis coming up at seven o'clock. So again, I wouldn't put away your computer or whatever tablet you're using and stay connected with us as we get excited for, Again, the Wizards uh, will begin with the, the ninth pick, and we enjoyed the ninth pick last year, Rui Hachimura. That, that seemed to, to work out well. And on that note, of course, he uh, played in college. But I'll get, uh, this is another question from our season ticket members. Uh, and I'll start with you, Tommy, and get you to comment as well, Frank. Uh, the international uh, aspect is, is continuing to grow. Um, how is that impacting your job, and, and uh, how do you go about scouting globally now uh, uh does that mean i'm going to have to move to latvia to try to discover some more latvian players or <laughs> what what's what's the game plan there i don't think anything's changed dave it's always been a global game just the, the, you know, when you consider a quarter of the nba basically is from international uh, areas as opposed to being from within the united states you realize how much the game has grown and how many players are able to come to the nba pretty seamlessly from anywhere in the world so we don't really look at it in, in one section of the world versus this section. We, we try to spread out and make sure we have a pan-European approach, a pan-South American approach, a pan-Asian approach where we're able to get the best information, the best uh, rankings of players from firsthand intel. And I think we've created a heck of a network. Frank Ross, Johnny Rogers, two of the very best in the business. And then we've, we've scaled with a lot of people on the pro level, a lot of other uh, international scouts that work with us have been fantastic. Marco Baldi, John Pestestic, and, and Francesco Cavalli are, are people that are spread throughout Europe. And then we have some other people that are stationed, as I mentioned, on other continents. Uh, it really just comes down to finding the best talent. It's pretty much borderless anymore, Dave. There's not one country that, that we say over this country, over that country, not at all. It's where's the, where's the talent, where's the competitive gene, the desire to come to the NBA. This year's draft, you have players from France that grew up in the United States. You have players from Argentina. You have, you know, the list goes on and on. Uh, the first round may have five or six international players hear their name. And that's, that's to me, it just continues to prove that the game is global and probably always has been. Now we're just doing a better job of identifying, finding that talent and developing that talent. Well, uh, basically, it sounds like we have a borderless game and a positionless game now. That's, that's the way <laughs> basketball is. Uh, we have a, a number of questions here in the DC 12 Clubhouse about both of your uh, backgrounds and getting to the, the, the road that you traveled. And we'll start with you, Frank, about, uh, we, as we mentioned, uh, just a tremendous player in college at, at American University. Uh, go Eagles. And, and a lot of folks want to know how you got your start in college uh, scouting. Somebody also wanted to know that, that as your former job as a, as a police officer, is that right, to help you uh, in, in your current role? Yeah, well, uh, just answering the question about how I first got started, I, I actually fought being involved in basketball for about 10 years in, in my time working at, uh, five years as a police officer, then five years uh, selling the rainbow vacuum, and then I 
my first, actually my very first coaching job was at Marymount College as a volunteer assistant with Chuck Drizell. Mm -hmm. And that, from that job there, that's how I ended up um, getting into, on the pro side about what, four, four years later. And, um, and so I, I, then I got a division one college coaching job and then I started scouting for the Charlotte Bobcats. And then as far as, um, in, in this job, you know, you are, as an evaluator, you, 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 uh, you observe people, you're observing people's habits. And so my job as a police officer, some of those skills have translated because as a police officer, you also are observing people's habits as well. And sometimes those habits get them, you know, um, in trouble, but it's helped me in, in terms of just even even doing interviews and in, in body language and watching people's eye movement, guys' eyes, eye movement when you ask them questions. Uh, but I definitely say my time as a police officer has, has definitely helped me in my scouting with observe, becoming a better talent evaluator. Hmm. Now make me nervous. Maybe you're observing me. Always. Eye contact. <laughs> Eye contact sounds so great. And, and tell me, you know, again, as much as we talk about uh, and I think some of the points Frank just made, just terrific. As much as we talk about analytics, and that's important, and, and the technology is important, but it, it's still a, a people business, and that, that certainly is part of your story in the road to get to the position you're in right now. Oh, certainly, Dave. You know, when I, when I was in college, I actually played football, Division One football in New Mexico State. I played basketball my entire life. Football just gave me the opportunity to go to college, and I appreciated the exchange. Got into media relations while I was uh, finishing up college. Took my first job out of college at, at UNLV, where I actually was a sports information director, and that was kind of my big end. I was very blessed at the time at, at UNLV. You know, I was, uh, we kind of looked at the Rebels back then as the 31st franchise in, in the NBA. We had a lot of good players, a lot of good talent, one of the greatest coaches ever to coach in college, and Jerry Tarkanian. So I was very blessed to be around an elite program and, and kind of got the opportunity three years after that to go work for the Denver Nuggets. And, once I got in the NBA, I knew that's where I wanted to be. Growing up, that's all I ever wanted to do was play in the NBA, and, and, and that was always my dream to make it to the NBA. And somehow, some way, that road led me to there. But I do believe all the intel, all the scouting, all the analytics are so very important, but, but nothing takes more precedent than relationships and being able to communicate with people in this business. It's a people business, and, and nobody's there's no perfect player, there's no perfect coach, certainly no perfect front office, but the more depth that you have in your relationships, the bigger, the wider your network is around the globe. I think the better opportunities that seem to come to you and your franchise. And if you look at the people we surround ourselves with here, I, I simply have one of the very best teams in the NBA uh, in the front office, coaching staff, or all the people that, that are in our organization, I feel are just elite communicators and excellent, uh, excellent at, at what they do but I also think each one of them have, have fantastic relationships with people. It speaks highly to their character. And we're getting ready for the 2020 NBA draft. Our Wizards virtual draft pre-show starts at 7 o'clock with Dennis and Britt. Again, uh, check out the WashingtonWizards.com or all the, the social channels uh, for that. We appreciate you finding us in the DC 12 Clubhouse. The DC 12 Club members, we thank you so much for your, your support and your you're just getting ready for this draft, and we'll throw this question to you, Frank. It's from one of our DC 12 club members, or, or maybe you can address it too, Tommy. Do, do you have any idea that you, you'll have another draft to get ready for in 2021? Do you, do you have any idea what, what scouting is going to be like? Are you going to be able to go to college games? We, we get word this week the NCAA tournament is, is going to be held the entire tournament uh, in one place. Is it, is it too early to tell, or, or what could you tell that fan? Well, as far as um... – we're going to probably start now do a lot of watch a lot of the games uh, uh, via uh, television and and because uh, uh, they, they some of the games were not going to allow people in anyway going to allow fans in so that's how we're going to have to to scout those games so it, it's, it's definitely going to be uh, some adjustment in terms of doing that starting out and then we'll see how th as things progress during the uh, throughout the season how we, you know, if we change our, our mode of operation. All right. Dave, Dave, I would tell you that I think the most consistent thing that we will know about this season is change. change. There's going to be change weekly, and you're going to really have to be nimble in your planning. You're going to have to really be flexible and adjust as we go along. Um, they told us that for college scouts, they could go to any game where there were fans. 
and now certainly that's getting changed behind us. So you just have to be flexible and really have, again, the best ear to the streets and, and get the best intel in terms of, of what's ahead of us. That, that some of these big tournaments, uh, I think that we're going to be in one city now, they're being relocated. Some places might go to many bubbles we wouldn't be able to go to. But like Frank said, we'll, we'll watch a lot of stuff early and, and hope for the best like everybody. We just – basketball is here to lift people's spirits up, and we really need to focus on that. That's This is a fun business. It's one of the best businesses you could possibly be in. And to, to, an unhappy day in the NBA is kind of silly. We're very blessed. Yeah. Well, and one thing doesn't change is the excitement and energy and passion. It, it's it's a good environment. I mean, it's it's just – because it's, it's fun. It's a fun time. This is what, this is what all is, we, we all have been traveling and staying away from our home, our families for the whole year to get to that, this one day to get, do the draft. And then we, we get right back to it. So it's, it's the fun part of the year. It's like, that's the nirvana of, of, of the scouting world. <laughs> <laughs> and, and tell me, I think we'll, We'll, uh, we'll share this with people as we, we wrap up this edition of uh, Off the Court. There, we, you know, we all make mock drafts as fans. Well, there really is a, a big board that you, that you have, and you have everything uh, ranked, and, and, and that typically is, is what you follow. Is that, is that a fair description? No, absolutely. We rank them in the order of talent and the best fit for the Wizards, one to usually about 80, knowing that within that draft class, you're going to have a lot of people that are aced out because of injuries. Some people get knocked out because of backgrounds. And so that board kind of meshes well with where, roughly wherever you're picking around 30, like say at nine, we have about 12, 13 players. We think at nine, it's going to come from that group of players, more than likely 10, obviously. 37, it's a much bigger grouping. But we, we kind of look and see, okay, here's the criteria to play for the Wizards. Here do we think is going to be in that class. And then certainly – you, you, you keep an eye on need, but you always want the best talent, the best fit. But then there's certainly that opportunity after the draft. And who's the 61st pick? And that's all the players that didn't get drafted. And we have the opportunity to sign players on two ways. And we've had great success with two ways in the two years that we've had the go-go. Uh, our two ways have all played in the NBA at some point. Uh, there's several players that, that we have under consideration for that as well. So our board, like I said, will go out to probably 70, 75. And then with that grouping, uh, guys that don't get drafted, we have another board right next to it. Out of that group who's left over, here's two-way prospects, and then here's some other opportunities to put people in our G League team through Exhibit 10. So it's a very exciting night. We go very thoroughly through it. And uh, I just can't tell you enough about the work that these people that work for the Watch the Wizards have put into this point, Dave. Very proud of this group. Well, again, we thank you so much for your time and off the court. Remember, in the DC 12 Clubhouse, you have a chance to win great prizes each Thursday at our DC 12 Club Trivia Challenge. That includes this week. Now, each week, our guests will answer a special question, and the answer is then featured in the uh, Trivia Challenge. Now, Tommy, you can relax. You have enough pressure on you already. You already participated in our first Trivia Challenge. So this, <laughs> this question is for Frank. You ready, Frank? I, I got a question that if people answer it correctly, they're going to win a prize. So you ready for this question, Frank Ross? Mm -hmm. All right. This week's DC 12 Club Trivia Challenge question for Frank. Your profile states that you are a golfer. What is the best or most memorable round of golf that you've ever shot? <laughs> well, Dave, I can say any round that any round of golf I can play and in, in not go through two ball, two, two sleeves of balls. That's a great round for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's par. That's par for me, Dave. <laughs> right. So again, uh, the DC 12 club trivia answer is any round that Frank Ross doesn't go through two sleeves of golf balls. Sounds like you and I should play golf uh, together. <laughs> Again, Frank and Tommy, thanks so much for the time today and off the court. All right, I'm and Dave, best pipes in the business. Great to see you. Well, right, listen, 7 o'clock tonight, Dennis and Britt, our, our Wizards uh, pre-draft virtual countdown show. That starts at, at 7 o'clock. So we, we appreciate you finding us on off the court and, and tuning in here on the DC 12 Clubhouse. And we thank you so much for uh, the questions that you submitted. Now, again, we're taking a break next week uh, because of the Thanksgiving holiday. We hope everyone has a wonderful uh, Thanksgiving next week. But stay tuned and stay alert for more DC 12 Clubhouse opportunities with off the court coming after Thanksgiving. But stay excited and stay engaged. We're counting down to the 2020 NBA draft. Thanks for spending time with us.